Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Coding with Colt. Today is a great day to learn how to code, and uh, if you would, if you take a moment, go down, hit the subscribe button, and hit the like button, I'd really appreciate it. This episode is going to be very different than uh, my other episodes, because, well, we're not going to do any coding in this episode. One of my hobbies is, uh, well, hardware. Uh, Raspberry Pi, single board computers, uh, retro gaming hardware. And today we're going to do a little unboxing and a um, little assembly of something that I've got in the box. I think it's going to interest you. Um, this box came to me all the way from uh, the United Kingdom. So uh, let's take a look at what we got on the inside. Ah, yes. So one of my biggest pet peeves with the Raspberry Pi 4 is that it is a heat monster. It ha puts out a tremendous amount of heat, especially if you overclock it to 2 gigahertz, 2.2 gigahertz. And this right here is a very, very special case called the Desk Pi Pro. And let's see here. Let's take a look. So it says uh, it's a Nook style aluminum alloy case. Uh, Nook stands for Nook um, Intel's new unit of computing, so little mini mini PCs. It's got extended GPIO rear panels. Um, but the uh, best thing about this is that it's got a massive heat sink on the inside. So let's take a look. All right, so we got a instruction manual on the inside. And we're gonna assemble this in just a minute and test it out. See how well it soaks up the heat, keeps the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 cool. Little information card. I guess this is some uh, troubleshooting, abnormal infrared sen sensor, no sound output, etc. All right, here is the case itself. It's quite hefty. In fact, it's um, quite weighty. And it looks like uh, these back panels are acrylic and you've got some acrylic that you'd remove there. And so let's see, we've got a power button on the front, two USB ports, that's the uh, SD card slot, uh, cooling vents, and then on the back, this breaks out the GPIO port. One of the, I guess, things I dislike about the Raspberry Pi uh, 4, the Raspberry Pi 4, is that as they put more and more powerful processors in the Raspberry Pi 4, it really builds up the heat. And in a way, for what I use the Raspberry Pis for, um, it kind of defeats the purpose. If you've got to put a gigantic heat sink um, and put it into a big, huge case um, because it tends to cover up the GPIO ports. But this breaks out the GPIO ports right there. We've got two full-size HDMI ports. Uh, let's see. I'm going to assume that right there is probably power. Power in. We got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack right here. And uh, USB uh, 3 right there. And once again, this is... Um, um, acrylic that you would peel off. We'll take a look at that in just a minute. And we'll open up this case and install Raspberry Pi here in just a bit. And then right here is the, I believe the heat sink. Let's take a look here. Yeah. Oh, it's all the all different electronics, etc. So let's see here. Looks like a uh, USB-C cable various uh, connectors and screws. Uh, let's see here, once again, various uh, connectors and screws. Uh, it's a thermal pad for the uh, heat sink. And USB. Power, although um, I'm in the U.S., this is obviously not a uh, U.S. Uh, power adapter. 
Um, I had to order this from um, United Kingdom. I couldn't find it anywhere in the United States. Um, I'm going to give a link to the company I uh, ordered it from. And then we've got the actual, I think this is the actual copper block and heat seat. So let's take a look at that. Yeah, look at that. That is a super nice uh, heat sink there. And cooling fins. And then I don't know if you can see it, but there's an actual fan. You can see it right there. There's an actual fan right there. So this ought to keep the Raspberry Pi extremely cool. So we're going to overclock our Raspberry Pi to 2 or 2.2 gigahertz and see how well um, this keeps it cool. All right, let me get everything situated and we will assemble this thing. So here it is, completely assembled. Took me maybe 20 to 30 minutes to assemble it. Assemble, assembly was pretty straightforward, pretty easy. The instructions were very clear, very easy to follow. I made one or two minor mistakes as I assembled it. Um, nothing major, and they were all my fault for basically not paying attention to the instructions. A couple of things I wanted to go over that I didn't go over when I was unboxing. First of all, and probably the most important, the most major, is I had forgotten that um, this actually has a bay for two and a half inch uh, SSD, uh, SATA SSD, or a M.2 SSD. Um, and in fact, that's the whole reason why I bought it. Well, that and the massive cooler on it. Because I wanted to turn this possibly into uh, emulation station retro Pi system. And um, being able to put a SATA SSD or M.2 SSD into it um, would um, really uh, expand the number of ROMs, etc. that you could, uh, you could have. Um, another thing I didn't go over was price. It costs, uh, if you buy directly from the manufacturer, it's $59.99 plus shipping. I didn't buy it from the manufacturer. I bought it from a place called the Pie Hut in uh, the UK. I'm here in the United States. I chose the Pie Hut because, well, they had it in stock. And they were absolutely incredibly um, responsive when I was emailing them about questions about this, about shipping and stuff like that. And they got back to me super quick. And so I decided to order from them. Um, shipping was $30, but I chose uh, a pretty pretty quick shipping rate, um, shipping speed, because I wanted to get it here pretty quickly. Um, and they, they actually shipped it out, I think, the same day that I ordered it. Maybe maybe the next day. It was pretty quick, and I had this thing within, within a week. So from the time of ordering it to having it in my hands uh, here in the United States, it was probably uh, less than less than one week. I'm really incredibly impressed with the quality of it. I mean, just absolutely impressed. And for $60, um, I, I really think you're getting your, your money's worth. It's big, it's a solid build, it's hefty, it's well put together, uh, well designed. And so I'm really, really impressed with it. Uh, one change I did make was that uh, it comes with these thermal pads. It comes with these thermal pads. I decided not to use the thermal pad. Uh, instead, I put a little dab of thermal paste on there. I put on some, uh, what is that, um, Arctic Silver, Arctic Silver 5 in there. And it should keep it nice and nice and cool. In fact, speaking of that, let's go over here and uh, let's stress test this thing. Uh, let's get it all hooked up, get everything installed. Stress test it and let's see just how well that fan and heat sink actually, uh, actually performs. So let's go do that right now. Okay, I put it through its paces, stress tested it for a bit, wanted to show you the results. Before I did that though, um, there's some software that you have to install. That software is used to um, control the fan speed, um, do the safe shutdown for the power switch and a few other things. In the instruction manual, it gives you a command to enter into um, a terminal that installs the software that you need. Then there is a, it installs a, basically a configuration program to allow you to configure the fan speed. And right now I have the fan speed set to 4, uh, fan speed level set to 100%, and it's surprisingly quiet. If you've got it in a room where there's a little bit of background, background noise, you're probably not going to notice the fan, especially if you've got it sitting out to the side away from you. I've got mine uh, sitting right next to my gaming PC and the PC I use to um, 
shoot video, etc. And it's got four, five, six fans in it, giant graphics card, it's loud, and so I don't notice it at all. What I did was I uh, overclocked my Raspberry Pi. I've got this one overclocked to uh, 2.2 gigahertz, as you can see right up there, 2.2 gigahertz. And if I do that, you can see I've got it overclocked to 2.2 gigahertz. And the um, uh, GPU freak, I think I have it set to 750 megahertz. And I took temperature readings. Uh, well, I stress tested it. So um, I entered in that command uh, to stress test it. I stress tested it for 30 minutes while I took uh, uh, data. And I took that data and graphed it. And it's absolutely amazing. So I have this Raspberry Pi for overclock to 2.2 gigahertz, which is a really, really good overclock on a Raspberry Pi. And the GP, uh, GPU Freak set to 750 megahertz. And with the fan turned on, I got to a maximum. Uh, you see it ramped up pretty quickly. And then it settled out at right around uh, 50 degrees. Uh, looks like the high temperature was somewhere in the neighborhood of 51.6 degrees. Yeah, somewhere in the neighborhood of 51.6 degrees. So it never even got to 52 degrees. And that's an absolutely amazing thermal profile on a Raspberry Pi 4 that's been overclocked to 2.2 gigahertz. It doesn't come anywhere close, anywhere close to thermal throttle speeds. In fact, um, I think a few people have overclocked their Raspberry Pis to like 2.3 gigahertz, and this might actually even be able to uh, do that with uh, this type of cooling on it. But the case is absolutely amazing. For $59.99, you get a case with a massive cooler and fan on it. The ability to uh, put in an M.2 or 2.5 inch uh, SATA SSD. You get safe shutdown. You get um, multiple USB ports. You get two... Uh, three, four USB 2 and looks like three USB 3 ports. You get um, full-size HDMI ports. It's absolutely amazing for $59.99. One of the other things I wanted to do was I wanted to install RetroPie on this and see how it performed under RetroPie. And uh, some typical uh, games are difficult for um, Raspberry Pi and RetroPie to run, such as uh, Nintendo 64. So let's take a look at that real quick before I give my uh, final, final verdict, final thoughts. So here we are with the case. I've uh, installed RetroPie, a bunch of uh, emulators and ROMs. Basically, I did, uh, downloaded and installed a uh, image with uh, a bunch of stuff on it. Uh, anyways, I was able to uh, drop out of Emulation Station. You press F4 to do that. Go into Terminal. I was able to install the driver software for the case. So I was able to uh, turn the fan on, control the fan, etc. Um, and it works extremely, extremely well, as you can see here. Uh, Okay, there we go. As you can see here, Super Mario 64 is actually running extremely well. I was able to overclock it to 2 gigahertz. I wasn't able to get 2.2 gigahertz out of it uh, running uh, Emulation Station, RetroPie, and everything. So I overclocked it to 2 gigahertz. And I think the um, GPU I overclocked to, or I clocked it to 620. I think 620 uh, megahertz. So, you can see it's running extremely well. Um, I have tried out a few other uh, games in the uh, Nintendo 64 um, platform, Nintendo 64 family, and most of them ran pretty well. Uh, there were a few that had some problems, uh, GoldenEye. Um, it, it actually ran fairly smoothly, but it had a ton of graphical, graphical glitches. Uh, but overall, uh, this case is an excellent, excellent choice if you're looking to uh, build a um, RetroPie type uh, system. It'll keep it uh, nice and cool. You can overclock it by quite a bit and uh, it works extremely, extremely well. 
All right. So it's highly recommended if you were if you're going to uh, build something like this. All right, let's go back to the desktop and let me give you my kind of final final rundown on it. So my final thoughts. I think you can probably already figure that out by now. I really like the case. I know it's a little bit on the expensive side at sixty dollars, but you get a lot for that sixty dollars. It's a really nice, very well made aluminum case. You get smart shutdown. You get a massive ice tower cooler that keeps the pie incredibly cool. You get more USB ports broken out on both the front and the back. You get easy access to your SD card. You get two uh, full-size HDMI ports broken out. And you get the ability to install a 2.5-inch SATA SSD or even an M.2 SSD. So I think it's well worth the $60 if you're uh, really stressing out your Pi. If you're going to be using it in a project or you want to use it as a, a desktop computer, um, this will keep it incredibly cool. I never went above about 51 degrees, 52 degrees, um, and I've got mine overclocked to 2.2 gigahertz and the uh, GPU freak set. I think 750 um 750 gigahertz. Let's uh, take a look at that. Ho helps to uh, have focus in the window if you're going to tie it. All right, so let me just uh, check my config here, see what I've got everything set at. Yeah, I got over voltage set to 8, arm freak set to 2200, and my GPU freak set to 750, and this keeps it incredibly cool. Um, so I, I think it's well worth it. I will put uh, links down below to the Pi Hut, which is where I bought it from, and the manufacturer's website. And um, I would really appreciate it if you like the channel or like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos here in the new fu near future uh, with a bunch of retro tech, tech um, retro gaming, and single board computer related uh, stuff. I'm um, going to kind of expand the channel from just pure coding. So if you're into coding, you want to learn how to code, um, I'm going to be making an Asteroids clone that I've almost got finished. Going to be making the video for that here in the next few days, hopefully this weekend, and get it put up. But anyways, thank you for viewing. I very much appreciate it, and have a good day. Bye-bye.